In this video, we're going to be adding the Fully Kiosk browser to our Amazon Fire tablet so we can display our Lovelace proudly on the wall. Make sure you stick around and if you like what you see, hit that subscribe button below and keep an eye out for more videos. Hi, I'm Will from Will Surrey's Tech, and today we're going to be having a look at an Amazon Fire HD tablet. We're going to be installing a fully kiosk browser on it, and then wall mounting it to show off our Lovelace dashboard and provide easy access for all in the house. So let's get going. So here is a brand new Fire tablet. I got it, obviously, on Prime Day, very reasonable price of just £40. And we are going to set it up and get our fully kiosk browser on it. So I went for the 8 inch option because I didn't really want to be too intrusive, you know. Um, in here we have got some gumph, some more gumph, another plug that we definitely don't need. What is it? Is it USB C now? USB C cable. Obviously, because they've all decided to change over to USB-C, just as I've got a nice stock of micro-USBs. Um, and the tablet itself. Good sized tablet. Very happy with it. And it does have the camera on the top in the centre, so it makes it look much better for uh, those sorts of purposes. Right, so let's turn it on and see what we've got. Initial setup, we have to select our country. Of course, it automatically remembers my Wi-Fi information, which isn't slightly scary, and knows my accounts. Meet your tablet. From watching movies and reading books. Oh, really? To ask. Start a timer. Then. It's easy. No, I am not a child. No, I don't want to read. No, I don't want Audible. Crikey. No, I don't want Kindle. Well, this is a bit tedious. No, I don't want free apps. There we go. We're in. Sorted. So, oh, no, I don't want any more tutorials. No, I don't care about her. Disable it, disable it. Right, we're now in. So what we need to do is go to... Fully kiosk. Oh, Bing. Why is Bing my preferred browse, my preferred search engine? We want to get a fully kiosk browser. And we want it for Fire OS. And then, oh, the tablet is not settings. Allow. Back. Install. App installed. Let's open it. There we go. So, no, oh, okay. So the action bar is all in the side. Now, one thing is you will need a plus license to get the cool features such as motion detection. But that plus license is only £6.90, six €6.90, so it's really totally worth it. You can trial everything uh, before you get the plus license, which I would highly recommend you do, and it will just come up with a watermark, and then when you're happy with it, you get the license. So, web content settings, we'll come back to our start URL. I believe all of this we don't need. Web browsing settings. 
I'm going to enable pull down to refresh. Um, screensaver, that's what we want. Screensaver timer. So let's set it to 30 seconds. And it just wants to go to black. Brightness of one. And then motion detection, that's what we want. Visual motion detection. We'll leave the settings as they are for now. Um, we can always try that or fiddle with that later once we've used it for a bit. Turn screen on on motion, exit screensaver on motion. So after 30 seconds, we'll go into screensavers. And once it's detected mo motion using the camera, it will do that. All right, so we're in. What we want to do, so swipe to the, from the right to get into your settings. And we want to change our start URL. And of course, that wants to be our Lovelace. Right, so we've got our tablet on the wall behind me, as you can see. Um, very easy mount, I just 3D printed, and then a cable hiding away and running to a socket. Um, we need to get it integrated into Home Assistant. Obviously, so far, it can display a dashboard, and that's great. Um, but we need to integrate it. So we're going over to the Hack Store. And we are going to search for fully kiosk browser. And we're going to install the repository. So we go over and we restart Home Assistant. Right, so Home Assistant has restarted and we can go into our integrations and add a new one. And it's going to be fully kiosk browser. remote admin password that we set up on the tablet, which you should have remembered. And success. Funny long name, but that's fine. It is in here. So we've got a battery level, device admin sensor, the foreground app, God knows what that is, internal storage, used, uh, free and total. So we can create a sensor on that, I suppose. Not really going to be using the internal storage at all. Um, we can lock it. We'll see what that does in a minute. Kiosk mode. So that's if you fully lock it into kiosk mode, uh, as opposed to just having it display a kiosk, which means obviously at the moment, if I wanted to get out of it, I can just kind of swipe around and press the home button. Uh, whereas if it's in fully kiosk mode, you can't do that. We've got the last app start, maintenance mode, a media player. What can we do with that? Can we text to speak? No, we can't. Uh, it's, whether it's plugged in, it's RAM, that's RAM free, the screen turning it on and off. Orientation, screensaver on and off, and the Wi Fi signal level. So if we turn it on, and then we can turn the screen off and turn the screen back on. That's very nifty, isn't it? And when it's off, my waving will wake it back up again. And with the screensaver, if we turn it off, then it will just stay like that. Whereas we've actually got it set to, after 30 seconds, it will go off. There we go. And if we bring it back up, then it will come back up, if that makes sense. So it's not the most useful thing in the world, um, but it's nice to have a bit of information about our tablet. At least we can see that it's you know online and plugged in and got battery and all that kind of thing, which is nice to know. And I'm sure there are plenty of automations you could create with the screen and the screensaver. All right, so generally speaking, it is, it does work. It just comes up with a little error. I'm not sure why, um, but it will follow various things. You can turn kiosk mode on and off and it will do that. You can turn your maintenance mode on and off and that just kind of locks the screen from being able to be used for anything, uh, which obviously other than turning off maintenance mode. 
Um, so that's cool. Media player, I'm not sure why that's not working, but it doesn't seem to have a state. Now I've had this tablet up for a little while, um, and I have to say it is great. If you're ever thinking about getting a dashboard, then do it, because I am fed up, or I was fed up of pulling my phone out all the time, having to open the app, all that. But with this, I just walk up to the wall, uh, and it just appears, and it's there ready for me to go. Uh, the motion detection settings I've actually left as they were, um, which work very well. So the default allows me to walk up to the tablet and it's on by the time I'm there, um, which means it's not turning on, like, if I wave my arms, it won't turn on in the background, um, but it does turn on when I want it. So the default settings are great. Um, I still can't get the media player to work, not sure what that's about. It could be my network. I've been having major problems with that lately anyway. Um, so it's probably that. What I will mention is there are some other cool things you can do with it and they require a REST API. So if you head over to the fully kiosk website, um, I've left a link below and you can see that there are various things you can do, including getting screenshots or getting camera shots. Uh, when the when motion has been detected and you can obviously integrate that into an automation so if you want to you can get a snapshot so if you're using the tablet to arm or disarm your alarm system for example you could get a camera shot every time that happens so you know who's doing it which is really cool um, I don't really have a use for it at the moment uh, maybe I will in the future if I start using it for as I said an alarm um, but for now I don't need it. And I think this hacks integration does give you plenty of sensors just to keep your eye on things, to turn the screen on and off if you need to in an automation, or just check that it's running okay remotely. So there we go, an Amazon Fire tablet wall mounted and running my Home Assistant dashboard in the fully kiosk browser. Make sure you hit that subscribe button below and click the bell icon to find out more about my smart tech and how you can build yourself the ultimate smart home.